And I need to tell you that I was nervous because in front of me was a 17 month journey that looked like me getting up every morning at five o'clock, rain, shine, or minus 40 winter, and walking 35,000 steps, 24 kilometers. And when it was done, it would see me walk over 9,000 kilometers. Two big fears I had. One, that my body wouldn't make it. I was 49 years old. And two, nobody would care. One of the biggest things that I believe in is possibility. It's not looking at what is presenting. It's asking the question, what's behind that? Predictable patterns say that this is probably gonna look like this tomorrow, but what if it was a little different? What if there was something else? That's possibility. Our possibility is on the other side of a set of actions that are oftentimes uncomfortable. The greatest thing that we can do as parents, as leaders, as coaches, as businesses, is to foster that possibility and get people moving in the right direction. Possibility needs to be the bedrock of all great leadership. Because you can't lead a company, you can't lead a government, you can't lead a school, you can't lead a family, you can't lead a team without believing that there's something beyond what's in front of us right here. You know, my father was this man who instilled a sense of courage in us kids. You know, he used to say things to me like, son, I love you, you can do and be anything. My dad spoke to our possibility as kids. Unfortunately, in 1975, my father passed away suddenly from a heart attack. Mom remarried really quick, and the next guy that came into our home, he wasn't anything like my dad. He was a violent, abusive alcoholic. I went from a father who would say, I love you, you can be and do anything, to a man who would say things like, you're stupid, you're dumb, and you'll never amount to anything. But at nine years old, man, I was confused. I didn't know what to do with myself. I had lost my dad and I didn't know what to do with all this grief. By the time I was 15, I got kicked out of the house. By the time I was 16, I dropped out of high school. By the time I was 17, I was involved in the criminal justice system. And for the next several years, things just came undone. I was unrecognizable to my family. So I struggled with homelessness. I struggled with opioid addiction. I struggled with mental health. Until eventually I was that guy you see pushing the shopping cart, collecting cans and bottles to support that drug dependency. For me, possibility left, left me on a, on a park bench. And all I could see is failure. All I could see is my past. Before I left the downtown east side, I met a man who would forever define my belief in possibility. And his name was Gus. He looked at me and he said, there's more to you than you can see. Here's what was sitting beside him on a park bench. It was a man with dirty, black fingernails from dumpster diving, a scruffy beard, yellow broken teeth, matted hair that hadn't been combed in a year, and clothes I've been wearing for a year, and a, a stink that comes from poor personal hygiene of sleeping outside. He looked past all of how I was presenting, and he spoke to what was just on the other side of that, which was my possibility. time ago I made a promise on a street corner and I feel this tugging I feel this calling to do something to give back two big fears I had one that my body wouldn't make it I was 49 years old and two nobody would care the cool thing about possibility is inside possibility is innovation is creativity is change now I believe that every problem that we are experiencing today as a species, there is a solution for it in the realm of possibility. And I believe that as each one of us wakes up to what's possible, we can solve some of the biggest challenges that we face in our communities, in our families, and in our organization.